Consider the function f of x. Let's say that it's equal to 3x plus 9. What is the inverse function given f of x? How can we find it? In order to find the inverse function, the first thing you want to do is replace f of x with y. So y is equal to 3x plus 9. Next, switch x and y. So you need to understand what the inverse function is. Let's say if you have the point 2 comma 7, the inverse point is 7, 2. All you need to do is switch x and y. So those points are inverses of each other. So once you switch x with y, or y with x, go ahead and solve get y by itself so we need to subtract both sides by 9 first and then to isolate y we need to divide by 3 so the function x minus 9 over 3 that's the inverse function that's how you can find it so now let's try another example let's say f of x is equal to x squared minus 4 Go ahead and determine the inverse function. Feel free to pause the video. So first, let's replace f of x with y. Next, let's switch x and y. And then solve for the variable y. So let's add 4. And then let's take the square root of both sides. So the inverse function is simply the square root of x plus 4. That's the answer. Let's not forget to add plus or minus since we took the square root of both sides. Here's another one that you could try. Let's say that f of x is equal to the cube root of 3x plus 8. Go ahead and determine the inverse function. So let's replace y with f of x. Next, let's switch x and y. And then let's solve for the variable y. So to solve it, we need to raise both sides to the third power. So x cubed is equal to 3y plus 8. The cube root and the cube will cancel. So now we need to subtract both sides by 8. And then we need to divide both sides by 3. So now we have the inverse function. So the inverse function is simply x cubed minus 8 over 3. And so that's it. Consider the functions f of x, which is equal to 3x plus 9, and g of x which is equal to x minus 9 over 3. How can we determine if these two functions are inverses of each other? Here's what we need to do. f of g of x, we need to show that it's equal to x. And if we can also prove that g of f of x is equal to x, then the two functions are inverses of each other. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's replace g of x with what it's equal to, that's x minus 9, divided by 3. And now let's take that and plug it into f. So let's replace the x portion with what we see here. That is x minus 9 over 3. 3 divided by 3 cancels. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so we have x minus 9 plus 9. Negative 9 plus 9 is 0, so we simply get x, which is what we want. Now let's focus on the other one. Let's plug in f of x first. Let's replace f of x with 3x plus 9. And now let's plug this into g. So let's replace x with 3x plus 9. So it's 3x plus 9 minus 9 over 3. 9 minus 9 is 0. 
So that leaves behind 3x divided by 3, which is x. So because both composite functions equal x, f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. Consider the graph f of x is equal to x squared. Let's find the inverse of this function and let's graph it at the same time. So y is equal to x squared. To find the inverse, we need to switch x and y and we need to find the value of y or we need to isolate it. So y is equal to plus or minus the square root of x, which is the inverse function. So the original function is f of x is equal to x squared and the inverse function is plus or minus root x. This is the right side of the graph y is equal to x squared. And the graph y is equal to the square root of x looks like this. Let me draw that better. Notice that these two, they're symmetric about the line y is equal to x. That's a property of inverse functions. The other side of y equals x squared is over here. This is positive root x, and then the other side of it, negative root x, is over here. This portion is equidistant from the line y equals x. They're still symmetric about it. And so that's a property of inverse functions. They're symmetric about that line. So let's say if we have a function that looks like that, and we want to draw the inverse function. All you need to do is simply draw the reflection about that line. So if the red line is f of x, the blue line is the inverse function. Consider this function. Let me use a different color. So let's say that's f of x. The inverse of this function, can you determine if the inverse is a function? We know how to tell if f of x is a function. If f of x passes the vertical line test, it's a function. It touches it only once, so f of x is a function. Now what about the inverse? What can we do from this graph to determine if the inverse is a function? There's something called the horizontal line test. The graph touches the horizontal line test once, which means that it's a one-to-one -one function. For every x value, there's only one y value. And for every y value, there's only one x value. So if f of x passes the horizontal line test, which means it's one-to-one, -one, that means that the inverse will pass the vertical line test, which means the inverse is a function. So let's say this is f of x. Is f of x a function? Does it pass the vertical line test? And yes, it does. It only touches it once. So f of x is a function. Now what about the inverse? The inverse of f of x, is that a function? Well, let's see if f of x passes the horizontal line test. It does not. It touches the horizontal line more than once. So because f of x is not a one-to-one -one function, because it does not pass the horizontal line test, the inverse is not a function. The inverse will not pass the vertical line test. So now let's prove it using a graph. So let's draw the right side of y equals x squared. And just the top part 
of y equals the square root of x. That's y equals positive square root of x. These two are inverses of each other. But notice that this curve passes the horizontal line test. It touched it once. So the right side of y equals x squared is a one-to-one -one function. And so the inverse, which is y is equal to the square root of x, Notice that the inverse function, it passes the vertical line test. So because the original function passes the horizontal line test, the inverse will pass the vertical line test, which means that the inverse function is a function. Now let's draw the entire function y equals x squared, not just the right side. The inverse function of that entire graph is the blue line. So notice that the function in red does not pass the horizontal line test. It touches it at two points, which means that it's no longer one to one. And therefore the inverse function will no longer pass the vertical line test, which means that the inverse function is not a function. So you can use the horizontal line test to determine if the inverse function will pass the vertical line test. If it passes it, that means the inverse function is a function. So if f of x does not pass the horizontal line test, the inverse function will not pass the vertical line test, and so the inverse is not a function.